Well, that was my Sundays. That's how I grew up, going to the Ciclovia every single Sunday. I oh, used cool. to, you know, cross the, the, the city. I'm, I'm a biker, too. Not as I much as it. you are, <laughs> but I'm a biker. And, and that's how I, I worked in Bogota, you know, from one studio to the other one on my bike. So I was the biker <laughs> voiceover. The bike voice, the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that's it. That's my dream. If I buy a house in Burbank, I want to go to studio to studio on my bike. <laughs> Isn't right, it a right, dream? Exactly. Right up and down Chandler, the Chandler bike path or whatever. Yeah. George the Tech. Hi, everybody. It's George the Tech. We've been having a great time talking to colleagues, clients, and partners in our voiceover industry. But I've got somebody special today because we've really been focused on a lot of folks who sound a lot like me, only English speaking. So I'm really glad to have an incredible talent today with us, who is bilingual, very talented, and has a great story to share about her voiceover journey. And here to share that with you today is Valentina Latina. How are you doing today? Amazing. Doing good, George. Um, I think this is a great platform for not only voice actors, and but also you include sound, you include a lot of tech and and I'm so thankful to be here and share my story. And of course, for my Latino community to to find some help, because sometimes you can have a lot of information around, but don't go specifically where you're looking for. So thank you for, for letting me share today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's there is so much information out there accessible mm -hmm. to us more than ever. Facebook groups, forums, um, different uh, voiceover communities, voiceover organizations, on and on. YouTube, of course, right? So um, my goal is to just find the best possible information and get it to people who need it when they need it. You know, that's our that's our goal. So thank you so much for working with us and trusting us with your help or your needs for help in your home studio. Sure. So you've had a bit of a journey. Tell us a little briefly um, yeah. how long you've been working in voiceover, and how your journey has gone so far. i make the story very short. Originally from Colombia, I was um, doing, th I've been doing theater since I was, I was a child. I did the conservatory. Then when I finished, I wanted to improve my English and my acting skills. So I came to Los Angeles 14 years ago. It's wow. exactly 14 years. And um, I went to New York Film Academy and then to UCLA to, you know, get more about the um, voiceover world from the American perspective. Yes. Since I was working since I was eight years old um, in Colombia. So it's only in Spanish and the market is pretty different. The rates are different. The conditions of work is different. Sure. Everything is different. Um, thankful. Uh, that this is changing and nowadays you can also, you know, include the word voiceover. Ten years ago in Latin America, voiceover, just the word is like, what is that? So really uh, interesting. That's the kind, yeah, so that wasn't that, like, I mean, there were act, there was plenty of acting and you were yeah, acting. Yeah. But where voiceover is considered to be a different industry from yes. acting, like uh, those are announcers or yes. how, how did it work there? More called like uh, announcers and absolutely in the anonymatum, you know, is the kind of guild. Uh, I, I had the sense here in Latin, North America, but not as much as it's in Latin America. It's like mm. really you have no idea who's the face for this voice and you grow up with these voices, but you've never, you know, have the, the, the even the curiosity to know what is that voice? Like, mm. well, behind there is an actor who did theater, <laughs> and musicals or tons of more things. So uh, for me, it was like trying to understand the industry here and see what part of the pie I can get when I wasn't born here. English is not my first language. It's about more acting and dubbing. And that was my mm -hmm. experience. So I'm so thankful also the times are, are changing and dubbing became a big industry. Yeah. And I remember this show, that was my very first show dubbing in English was El Chapo for Netflix. So I remember the casting director telling me like, 
we need your voice because this is dubbing in English and they want to keep people like with the accent, heavy accent. They want accent. dubbing in English, but they want an authentic accent to the, I guess, the culture, the role, yes. the characters of, the, of that series, yes. right? Uh, on top of that, she was asking me to play El Chapo's mother, who's 70 years old. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. But that has been my thing, you know, and, and thanks to voiceover, I realize my voice goes more with African-American voices and uh -huh. older voices, um, which gives me a lot of work <laughs> a and a lot range. of years to play. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you could do that for a very long time. Yes, I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope so. Anyway, so I went to my very first session and I realized how important my dubbing industry, it was turning into a big thing in Los Angeles. I'm talking about 10, what was that? Nine years ago, mm -hmm. we did that. After that show, I haven't stopped dubbing in English whenever the director, the producers are looking for the Hispanic accent English. So it's been a blast. That has mm -hmm. been my journey. Um, I don't know, about 30 years doing voiceover commercials, dubbing, animation, video games. Yeah, so um, you were doing voiceover, specifically voiceover work in Colombia. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. As yes, well yes. as on camera. As well as on camera, yeah. I'm still not understanding that that's too hard, way too hard. But anyways, here and there I have booked uh, certain roles. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And yeah, you just had an on, interesting on-camera role on a, on a pretty big Ah, oh, the Griselda, or that's the one you're talking about Griselda. with Sofia Rica. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, I also did the, the audio description in English. Oh, you did? So I ended up dubbing myself. That was super nice. No way. <laughs> yeah, different producers. Yeah, I'll have to go back and check it out and turn on the audio description. Please, please How do cool it. How cool is that? That was super cool. The that, casting I don't director. know if that ever happens. I mean, I know this, they're cast through completely different... Like, did they, did they have any idea that they're casting someone to play, do the voice of the, you know, that, that was just coincidence, right? It was a win-win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this producer from, she's from Argentina, uh, the one who does the audio description. I have done some other projects with her, mm -hmm. again, when my accent is fine. And so she was like, you know, trying to keep this hush-hush, like, hey, Val, I have this show for you. I wanted you to play all the female characters because that's what you do when you do audio description. You don't, just don't do one character. You do either female, in my case, or the general audio description. It's kind of almost like narrating an audiobook in yes. a way, right? Yes. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I'm good. Uh, no, but I need to, to, to tell you something to please be very um, prudent with this information because mm. it's from Colombia and I don't know what to say, blah, blah. Of course, I knew the show. I, we already shoot it like a year before this call. She ended up saying like, okay, it's Sofia Vergara, it's Griselda. And I'm like, no, wait, I'm there. And she was like, no, you're not. Yes, I am there. Episode number two. <laughs> she was like, I couldn't recognize you. I didn't know. <laughs> acting. So, it's acting. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I booked the, the auto description. So yeah, that's how, you know, this acting journey, you never know who are you talking to and what are you going to yeah. end up to. Yeah, I love it. That's so fantastic. Love so it. yes. Great and story. in the meantime, you know, we had a pandemic and um, it was even hotter for, especially for the ones who only speak Spanish or have, you know, better or longer careers in Spanish, to get into the American market is mm. like you have to bring different tools. Uh, you have to be so creative. You have to, you know, and then pandemic was like, now you have to have a real home studio. Yes. And to yes. bring that confidence to the clients to your agents that was the challenge i i wasn't that behind in the one mm -hmm. work so i just went to george of course <laughs> you'll be my savior forever um and and i knew what to buy exactly and without that much of money and a very uh, decent sound I was able to work during the whole pandemic. So you had that opportunity and you took it and you were able to continue working, but through the pandemic, you found you had to find new yeah. skills and tool sets and you had to dig in and 
it was just you were you had new challenges to face. What did you find when it came time to having your home studio really dialed in? Was that was that really when the pandemic started? Was that when you your home studio went from maybe being a place where you do auditions mm -hmm. to actually doing the work happened? Or were you already doing home based voiceover work before that? I was. I did I remember that was I'm talking about a closet, like literally mm -hmm. a closet. My yeah. neighbor upstairs, it was exactly their their toilet was in my Oh, my so you, thing. So I, I knew their that. schedule. <laughs> you knew how regular they <laughs> <Yes>. were. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. Monday is the morning. That doesn't work. So no, 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 don't book that session at that time. I knew it. <laughs> you know, only yeah. people who live in apartments, especially in California, they know what we're talking about or mm -hmm. New York for sure. But anyways, I I was doing yes, decent work good clients, but my biggest surprise came when I bought my first house. That was 2020, actually at the end of the year, it's that was October. a big deal. I haven't done that yet. Oh, I'm still waiting to on, grow up and buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your and first that, house 2020, and then 20, what was 20. the next challenge there and at the then, new place? Uh, Amazon was, okay, uh, can you direct our ADR sessions for this show? And I was like, hold on, I'm just a voiceover struggling actor trying to survive. And now you're asking me to direct a show is going to be on your platform or am on Amazon. Uh, so George, that's again, where George, you're my savior, um, helped me with yeah. Source Connect Pro. So I had to buy it and, and trying to understand, as you say, what is what else I need? What other tools I need? I need a, a lavalier. I need another kind of boom microphone because it's very specific. I remember that time I had to rent some equipment, actually, and and then you know I bought some others and and yeah. nowadays now it's like okay. And I did another one for Netflix and it's been some you know directing ADR in Spanish that I'm glad, you know, in Los Angeles exists and, and yeah. I can offer that nowadays. Yeah, now yeah. I don't Did, feel scary like, oh no, my neighbor, my, no, no, no. So the, the next stage for you was really moving into the new house. Then how did you find a space in your new home hmm. and what did you choose to do for a studio in that space? My mental health is a priority. So for me, like natural lighting, yeah, place where I can breathe, easily and move my body because um, I remember more and more captions auditions were going on my way. So the kind of auditions you have to show an animal. So you have to be able to have a good sound, but also to look like a dinosaur or Holy move that's as not a... not easy, yeah, yeah. <sighs> so I choose this room and... And it's like kind of independent from the house. So it has an independent door. So that allows me also to have students or clients or people. Yeah. Um, so that's how I choose it. Mm -hmm. And in order to have better quality, I bought a booth first, which was a disaster. Please don't go with cheap people. I'm not going to mention the brand, but uh, if you see something ridiculously cheaper, that's a red flag. Um, and, and ask so, questions. <laughs> ask a lot of questions. Exactly. That's why, George, you're doing such a great job putting everything on the plate for us. Um, but I should check that before. Anyways, I had the experience. And then I got rid of the booth because it wasn't helping me, really. Yeah. And so I basically ended up doing my own whole room, my studio. Mm-hmm. And, and that worked out really well. And I got to go see it yeah. and see it and hear it for myself. And you did a really great job yeah. making that space work for you. You put in a sliding patio door yes. and the whole thing. You've seen some worked. imagination, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sliding patio doors can be really good for a studio door because they're large. So you have a big opening. You don't have to have room for the door to swing. And you get a it's glass. You get a window. And it's double pane because it's an exterior, you know, all patio doors are for the outside of your house. So they have better insulation, thicker glass, and it's a window so you can see out. So it has a lot of advantages, right? 
Yes, yes, yes. You just have to make sure that the rest of the room has a lot of absorption for any echo and reverb because the glass is going to make some reverb. So you figured that out too, I'm sure, as you got yes. things dialed in. I remember one of the biggest challenges was the ceiling. So if you remember, you taught me about the distance you have to keep in between. Mm -hmm. um, those days were like a raining days. And, yes. And, and that was the biggest challenge. But we ended up doing it just fine. And, yeah, and it worked out well. And then yeah. what we also took into account or we took in we took advantage of i should say of some more technology right we yeah. you use the oh, universal yeah. audio apollo right yes so we were able to dial that in using a very specific plugin right to reduce yes. the room tone even more and have Is you been using that sound? ever since you set it up with cvox does that sound familiar? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's working, and that's working well. That's <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's I even have awesome, the train right? next to me. I even have the train. Buying a house is no guarantee you're gonna have an exceptional sound. You right. never know what is gonna happen, and you don't know exactly the foundations of the house. So, this is a whole study, and and and, and I'm glad you know when you're collaborating with you, you were with a contractor, and you make sure materials and everything runs well. Yeah, it's, there's a lot to think about when you're buying a house and you can't always pick a house based on how quiet it's gonna be there. Yeah. Especially LA, we've got all the different airports with airplanes coming and going. We have the trains, we have just neighborhoods, we have streets, we have animals and on and on and on. There's so many places, sources for noise. So having Sweet. all these things working together Right. Is the, is the key. And I find these days it's not about making the quietest possible soundproof booth. It, mm -hmm. Sometimes we have the ability to do it. Thankfully, for some folks, they, they, they're, they have a concrete floor and, you know, we can do certain things when they're on a concrete floor, right? Because we can build something really heavy. But a lot of people can't do that. So it's great to be able to take the efforts that you and your husband did yeah. To get the room quiet as you can and get the echo and all that stuff. And then the last 10 or 20% of the noise, the plug-in, that software processing does that trick, right? Exactly. Sweet C-Box. Yes. Box. C Sweet C-Box. Mm -hmm. That's the one. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It runs on the Apollo. This isn't necessarily an endorsement of it, but... I'm just saying. <laughs> just dropping I guess it is an endorsement. Well, it's not. Nobody's being paid to say that here, but this is just something that we have found that works well. And it takes, I think the big thing is it takes the stress off of you yeah. doing live directed sessions, right? Yeah. And it's very inexpensive. I was surprised also by that because it, you can really see the big difference in the moment and then um, you don't need to invest that much. It's only about, you know, getting the, the right information. Yeah, it's a few hundred dollars for the plugin and, you know, that might seem high when you compare the cost of maybe other software. Yeah. But when you see how well it works and how mm -hmm. the thing that why it's thing that's so good about it is how transparent it is. So when you turn it on, it's not messing up your voice. Yeah. It's not making it sound processed and swishy and very robotic or whatever people might say and that's yeah. why it works so well my daughter she's eight years old she's studying doing some uh voiceover as well good and good. um yeah yeah and she loved it and we had to test it i remember when you install it uh the same week she had this session with lol dolls she yeah has a she was a pretty big it was a pretty big deal, right? I remember you So, me. but we passed, but we passed the recording session. I was afraid because I was with the engineer on Zoom. I had uh, the producer, I had the director, and I'm the engineer of my daughter. Of course, yeah. And so I was like just crossing my fingers. Yeah. Everything runs well, and they didn't have any issues. So it was That's perfect. That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, such yeah. a that when you told me that news, I was like, <sighs> yes, <laughs> that's what I. That's exactly all we can hope for. You know that we try these systems, we set them yeah. up and set them to be optimal. But will they work in the moment at the time of the session? You know, is it all going to work as you predicted? Yeah. 
And when it does, then I feel like we did a good job, you know? And then consi after that, it's consistency. Can you do the same sound, get the same results over and over and over? And that's when you become a real pro like yourself, that kind of consistency is definitely what they expect, right? Well, we'll see because I'm sure I'll be tested again. We are uh, planning to, to move to another place. So we'll see what happens if that consistency and, you know, um, trying to put everything together in a different place is always challenging. But I'm sure nowadays, uh, because not only the pandemic, but through the years, we've been collecting more and more and more that at the end, it, it, it doesn't have to be really a rocket science, but just to get the right information on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think the technology and the experiences we've all had, we can get you to that point so much easier and faster now than you used to. Yes. And, you know, soundproofing is so expensive. Like, if yes. you're trying to get rid of that last 10%, mm -hmm. that costs 10 times more. Right. You know, For it's sure. like, mm -hmm. if, it's like I, I got it really quiet, but I'm still hearing these little... Well, those last sounds you're hearing are the most expensive to fix. Mm -hmm. So why not use technology and be our, to be our friend? Because here's the, here's the real story. You know, you think you go to a commercial studio. Let's think of any major studio in, like, say, Studio City. Are they all totally soundproof? You've been in studios. Have you been yeah. in a studio and it's been perfectly silent with no, not always, right? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. And then yeah. what you say that the bigger studios are more and more common, especially when when you see huge, big productions. It's nothing as a box. It's a whole room. Yeah, it's a big room. And that's <laughs> not something you can replicate at home. Yeah. Almost never. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. these these spaces are totally different. And the ones that are truly soundproof are million plus dollar yeah. facilities. <laughs> For yeah. sure. You know, sure. so we can get a sound that's like 95% as good as that now in a home studio with the right gear and the right situation. And when everything's tuned correctly, it it's amazing what we can do. So yeah, it's been great helping you along with your journey. Where can people find you? And maybe you can give a little message to all of our clients and future clients. Of course. I'm going to say speak in English. Espanol. And then Yes, I'll do it in English and then in Spanish. Uh, well, you can find me on um, any social media. I usually just use LinkedIn or, or Instagram under Valentina Latina, Latina with a Y. Um, um, director, coach, um, of course, a talent. I, I love doing theater, ADR, animation, any kind of characters. That's my thing. Y para todos los que hablan español, mi nombre es Valentina Latina. Me encuentran en cualquier redes sociales. Eh, enseño doblaje, enseño comerciales, enseño el mercado americano. También dirijo demos. Y les recomiendo mucho el trabajo de George the Tech porque me ha ayudado a través de los años de no solamente entender muchas cosas del sonido, pero aplicarlas a mi trabajo de una manera muy eficiente y mis clientes están felices. My clients are happy. So, <laughs> thank you, matters. George. That's what matters. Yeah. Well, it's always delightful to see you and chat with you. Same. I'm really glad that things are coming along. I'm excited to see what the future holds with your next home. I know that's a process. Yes. And we're here to help you out when you need something else and get you dialed in. And there's a new booth coming, so we'll be finding yes. out what that looks like and sounds like when you have it set up and when it's ready. So looking forward to seeing that too. That's for sure. Yes, it'll be fine. And, and I hope, George, you can make some time and visit us in the next booth and try it and see how it goes. So I would love you know, to see that review as well. Cool. What's the name of that booth? Is that Moving Wall Company? Is it's that what Mobile they're... Wall. Mobile Wall Booths. Mobile Wall. They're from Colombia, but they're already um, doing the business in the States. They went to yeah. Via Atlanta, mm -hmm. and, and it's really good materials, really good sound, uh, because I had the chance to see it at the, at the Congress. But now, you know, purchase one, we'll see what it actually, you know, how it's going to work. But, but, but I'm very positive. 
And I think they're doing a great job. So It looked amazing. And I, I knew it was made in South America. I didn't know it was made specifically in Colombia. Yes. That's even more cool, huh? Wait, you're going to Colombia? Are you still well, going to Colombia? I really do hope to come down and visit Colombia. I know there's a there's a there's actually a conference in Colombia every yes. year now, right? Yes, I I'm You're afraid it's in September or August, I don't know, but yeah. it's in Bogota where I was in born. Bogota. So, oh, you will love it, George. I'm dying to go to Bogota for another reason too. <gasps> Why? You see that bicycle guy right there, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. I'm a bicycle nut. I and know. Bogota is known for ciclovi is it ciclovia? Ciclovia, right? Ciclovia. Ciclovia. There you go. And so we in Los Angeles have Ciclavia. And it's because designed after Ciclovia. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was my Sunday. That's how I grew up, going to the Ciclovia every single Sunday. I how used cool. to, you know, cross the, the, the city. I'm a, I'm, a bike, I'm a biker too. Not as I much as it. you are, <laughs> but I'm a biker. And, and that's how I, I worked in Bogota, you know, from one studio to the other one on my bike. So I was the bike, the biker <laughs> voiceover. The bike voice, the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love That's it. my dream. If I buy a house in Bourbon, I want to go to studio to studio in my bike. <laughs> Isn't right, it a right, dream? Exactly. Right up and down Chandler, the Chandler bike path or whatever. Yeah. I hope that for you. I wish that for you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, you so George. Much. It's been amazing. Thank you. And thank oh, you for having me. I appreciate your time. Here. Thank you so much. Take care. Ciao.